Today, I'm gonna show you how I made the dress for my Ichigo made uniform from Tokyo Miu Miu. This tutorial will work for any of the Miu's made uniforms. For this project, I used a combination of Simplicity Pattern 8160 and 3723. From the first pattern, I used the puffy sleeves, sleeve cuffs, and pleated skirt from View B. From the second pattern, I used the bodice from View A. You don't need the second pattern specifically, any fitted bodice with a high neckline would work. I thought this pattern came with a collar too, but it didn't, so I just found a random one from the internet, which I'll link to in the description. To make sure that the patterns work together correctly and fit me well, I made a mock-up out of some spare cotton I had in my stash. Once I was happy with the fit, I moved on to cutting out my pattern pieces out of the final fabric. When selecting the fashion fabric, I consulted the back of my pattern envelope. It suggested fabrics like broadcloth, chambray, chino, gabardine, and cotton, but I've also seen cosplayer use cotton sateen and sparkly calico. After looking at my options at my local fabric store and Joann's, I went with broadcloth. As for the colors, Ichigo's made uniform changes colors from scene to scene. Sometimes it's a muddled raspberry color, and other times it's a bright red. I've seen cosplayers choose either color for their costumes, and they both look nice. So since color accuracy was out the window, I just went with the color that I personally preferred, which is bright red. You will need the following materials for this project. 3.5 yards of red broadcloth, one yard of pink broadcloth, half a yard of white cotton, one yard lightweight iron-on interfacing, 24 inch dress length invisible zipper, 2.5 to 3 yards of white lace trim, preferably cotton lace, red double fold bias tape, red buttons, pink single fold bias tape and or a bias tape maker, fabric marking tools like chalk, a friction pen, wax, etc., and a machine. First things first, we need to cut out our pattern pieces from our fashion fabric. From the red fabric, I cut out the bodice front, left bodice back piece, right bodice back piece, two sleeves, three skirt panels, two collar left pieces, two collar right pieces. From the pink fabric, I cut out two sleeve cuffs. From the white fabric, I cut out two chest rectangles, which are roughly two inches wide and about torso length long. From the interfacing, I cut out the following half an inch shorter than the original pattern on all sides. Two collar pieces and two sleeve cuff pieces. After thanking our fabric supervisor, it's time to start putting it all together. We begin with the chest rectangle. Simply place the pieces right sides together and sew along the rectangle leaving one side open. Then turn it right sides out and press it with an iron. Next, base the lace trim to the underside of the rectangle. Then position it in the direct center of the bodice and sew along the same three sides. Finally, add the three buttons and a snap where the chest button will attach to. Continuing with the bodice, we first sew up the darts on the front and back bodice pieces. Then sew along the top shoulder and side seams. The pattern says to stay stitch, i.e. lock the arm and neck holes into place, but I never do that. So moving on to the skirt. First we join the three long rectangles which make up the skirt along the sides to create one long strip of fabric. Do not sew them into a loop. Next we hem the bottom. Ideally you should do a double fold or rolled hem. After a quick press, we move on to the skirt stripe. If you bought pre-made single fold bias tape, you get to skip over this next part. If you're like me and couldn't find a matching shade of pink bias tape, then you can make some using this nifty tool. It works by feeding a long strip of fabric through the large opening, then ironing the folded strip that comes out of the other end. The width of the fabric that you input in the tool needs to be a specific size larger than the finished bias tape which will be output by the tool. There's some math involved and I can't do math, so check this neat guide out instead. The amount of bias tape you will need will be the same length as the three skirt panels we sewed together earlier. After compiling all of your bias tape, we can add it to the skirt. Measure up about an inch from your skirt hem and pin your bias tape to your skirt to create the skirt stripe. Sew along the top and bottom to secure it into place. Take your time to make sure that your lines are neat and your tension is correct because it will be a pain to undo. To pleat the skirt, I first copy the markings shown on the skirt pattern. I use two different colored chalks to represent the solid and broken lines. Then, as the pattern instructs, I bring the two solid lines together, creating a fold along the broken line and securing the pleat with a pin. Rinse and repeat until the entire skirt is pleated. 
Now, we need to lock in the pleats by first ironing them down gently, then sewing two to three inches down each pleat. Lastly, I baste along the entire waist. And this is what it looks like so far. If we added a waistband and a zipper, we can make it just a pleated skirt, but we need to make it a dress, so let's move on to the bodice. We start by running a basting stitch along the top and bottom of the sleeve where the pattern indicates. We'll be using this stitch to gather the sleeves later, so leave the thread tails long and do not backstitch. Then we sew the sleeves side seams together and put them aside for now. Let's focus on the sleeve cuffs. Typically, the sleeve cuffs are created by just folding a rectangle in half, but Ichigo has trim at the end of her sleeve cuffs. Now, Simplicity does have a space on their pattern for you to add trim, but I hate the feeling of extra seams touching my skin, so I decided to do it differently. I split the cuff piece in half, then basted the trim onto one of the pieces with the lace facing inward. I ironed on the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric, and then I sewed the pieces back together and folded it like normal. As you can see, the lace pops right out without having a seam that touches my skin. It's extra, but it's worth it in my opinion. Now we're ready to attach the sleeve cuffs to the sleeve proper. First, we gather the bottom of the sleeve by pulling on the bottom bobbin thread until it fits the cuff with even gathers. Then place the edge of the sleeve cuff to the sleeve edge and sew down. Next, flip the cuff right sides facing out and fold the unsewn cuff edge into the sleeve's interior. Fold it down half an inch and hand sew it to the sleeve using a ladder or catch stitch. With our sleeves finished, it's time to attach them to the bodice. First, gather the top of the sleeve to fit the bodice armhole, then sew them right sides together. Because this arm's eye seam experiences the most wear and tear and sits directly on the skin, I recommend bias binding it. To bias bind a seam, you need double fold bias tape. First, lightly press and open up the bias tape. You'll notice that one of the edges is ever so slightly longer than the other one. Take the shorter edge and line it up to your seam with the right side of the bias tape facing the seam and sew along the first folded line. Next, fold the bias tape over to enclose the seam, tucking the long edge inside the fold. Lastly, sew this side of the bias tape down. The result is a neat, strong, and not itchy arm seam. With the sleeves done, it's time to finish up the last part of the bodice, the collar. First, we start by adding interfacing to one of the collar left and one of the collar right pieces. Then baste in the trim to one left and one right piece. Then join the two collar pieces together along the top edge and leaving the other two sides open. Next, match the bottom of the collar to the top of the neckline and sew it down. Now it's time to join the two halves, our bodice and skirt, to make one big beautiful dress. Simply lay both pieces right sides together and sew along the waistline. Up next is the invisible zipper. These are notoriously tricky to insert. Rather than providing a half-baked explanation, I recommend you watch Professor Pincushion's video on the topic. I'll link it in the description. So I pinned the zipper from the top seam of the collar all the way down about two to three inches from the top of the skirt and used a zipper foot to sew it as close as I could to the zipper's teeth. The last step is to close up the collar. Use your iron to press a half inch hem into the two open sides of the collar. The long edge of the collar will fold over and encase the neckline seam while the short edge will be stitched against the wrong side of the zipper. Hand sew these hems down using a ladder or catch stitch. And with that, we're finished with the base dress for Ichigo's maid uniform. Let's check out the final reveal. It's finished. This project has been a long time in the making. It's been about two years now. Uh, on and off work, you know, school and work responsibilities kind of get in the way. But uh, if I had to rate it, I would say this project is like a beginner intermediate, begin intermediate perhaps, at level of difficulty. Because, you know, like typical beginner projects are like straight lines and you know, circle skirts and things like the, that, but this one had a couple of techniques that I think were a little bit above my skill level at the time, which is fine, you know, that's the whole point of learning. You know, you do things a little bit outside of your comfort zone and then grow in skill. Things like bias binding and making bias tape and pleated skirts and invisible zippers, oh my. Uh, but I've, been, I've enjoyed it, you know, this 
outfit's very special to me and I think even more so now that we have the Tokyo Mew Mew reboot coming soon and you know after the passing of Mia Kumi. So sad. I hope to take some pictures and kind of celebrate all the wonderful memories of Tokyo Mew Mew coming up. I hope to even wear it to a con one day. Uh, I, this was supposed to be made for uh, Anime Expo 2020. Ugh, RIP to that idea. But you know, now as we're coming into 2022, you know, I hope that some hope is on the horizon and that we can hopefully get back to normal activities someday. Probably not this year, maybe next year. <laughs> and it's fine. I mean, the, the project's mostly done anyway. Anywho, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot along the way and I hope you did too. Uh, if you want to stick around a little longer, I'll be making videos for the bow and possibly some other accessories like there's still the bloomers the apron etc so there's still more to see so if you want to stick around that'd be great okay bye